Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm here solo this week. Chris is in Disney World. So, I am a little bit late with the Super Bowl recap, but there is much, much to discuss, of course. Let's let that jam play a little bit. All right, so let's get into it. The Chiefs win 31-20 to over the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, fantastic halftime show, fantastic ads, everything else. We're going to get to all of it. Uh, but before we do, let's go ahead and tell you who is bringing you the show. The website is winningcureseverything.com. Go check it out for yourself. Picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button and leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought about the game. Uh, see if you thought it was as fantastic as we did. Uh, Chris got to watch it at uh, a nice restaurant in Disney World. Him and his wife. He hung out at the bar. I'll let him tell you the stories, of course. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have a bunch of them. Uh, we both missed on the 49ers, uh, but that's okay. We didn't have a ton of money on the game, but uh, but we had a little bit. We had some prop bets. We're going to get into those. We're going to recap those as well. Uh, and if you were going to make your prop bets, if you're going to bet on anything, go down to Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. We're going to vouch for all of them. So go check them out. Tunicatravel.com is the website to get more information. They got great shows coming through town, comedy, concerts, all that kind of stuff. They got great steakhouses. They got great golf courses. Go check it out for yourself. Tunicatravel.com is the website. Let's jump into this. It is fantastic to finally see Andy Reid, who has been at this for as long as a person my age can remember. Uh, he has not. He has not gotten a Super Bowl before now. Two hundred twenty second win. Uh, that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty fantastic. Patrick Mahomes was outstanding at the end of the game. That's about it. Uh, the last six, seven minutes of the game, he was great, lights out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, pretty mediocre. But when the other team only scores 20 points and you're only down by 10, all you need is a quick burst, and Kansas City has always got that in them. They did it in every playoff game, came back, from double digits down in every single playoff game. Never been done before. So cheers to them on that. Um, let's go ahead and recap some of the prop bets that we did. Uh, if you had bet 10 bucks on every single prop bet that I did and every single prop bet that Chris did, um, if you had done all 10 of mine, 10 bucks on each, you would have come out $29.97 richer. Uh, if you had done all of Chris's, you would be $61.35 uh, less. We'll say that. So, um, Chris went two and eight in prop bets. I went six and four. We both missed on the 49ers money line. Um, 49ers just spread straight up because obviously it's only point and a half. Uh, but we did hit the under. Now it got a little hairy there at the end, obviously with that, that late Williams touchdown run to make it 31 to 20. That's 51 points. The under was 54 and a half. Uh, everybody was betting over on 52 and a half. Didn't quite get there. So anybody that had to under, which was not a big portion of the population, they hit, and that's fine. Um, the ones that, that we did hit, anytime touchdown scores, so Pat Mahomes to have a rushing touchdown was plus 280, hit that one. We hit Jimmy Garoppolo to have an interception. Uh, let's see, I hit 49ers total team sacks over two and a half. Will the 49ers convert a fourth down? No, was minus 115. Hit that one. And let's see, hit, uh, will the game be tied after 0-0? Oh, and Miko Hardeman, total receptions under one and a half. Uh, that was plus 100. He only had one for two yards on the game. The two that Chris hit, uh, let's see, first, uh, either a sack or a touchdown, he picked sack. And yeah, there was a sack before there was a touchdown in this game. And the number of 49ers to score he had under three and a half, and that one hit. So that ended up working out pretty well uh, for both of us. The big question coming out of this game, um, obviously Andy Reid was forever known as the guy that couldn't win the big game. 
Now that mantle kind of goes over to Kyle Shanahan, right? So the question is, did Shanahan choke or maybe did Jimmy Garoppolo choke, right? If you go back and look at the final seven minutes of this game, and it wasn't just that, right? But if you look at the final seven minutes of the game, Shanahan had him set up in perfect spots to be able to win this ball game. The third and ten uh, that, that he overthrew, which had you underthrown the ball, then you at least get a pass interference. If you throw it dead on, then you've got a touchdown because he's a step and a half ahead of the, the defensive backs. But if you overthrow it, then you got no chance. And then it becomes fourth down, and you take a sack on fourth down is what it is. Uh, on the third and five play, when you're up 20-17, to 17, the 49ers are. Third and five, Jimmy G gets a ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. He's got Emmanuel Sanders in the flat, wide open for a first down. That would have run more time off the clock. Now, we can talk about Jimmy G not being able to make the throws, not being able to see the field correctly, etc. But the play calling itself was a little bit suspect, right? Let's, let's go back and think about what actually got them there. I mean, there were multiple series. In the second half, they completely got away from the run. The 49ers averaged over six yards a carry in this game, which is unbelievable. You average over six yards a carry and you lose the game? The only reason you do that is because you go away from it. And there was no reason to. Uh, They have got a drive where they come out and there's two minutes left in this ballgame. And they are now down 24 to 20. You got all three timeouts and the two-minute warning. You come out and you run a play that's uh, uh, Mostert for five yards. And then you don't ever go back to him. You have an incomplete pass on second down and five. You have an incomplete pass on third down and five. And then you don't get the fourth down. I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense to me why you would not continue to do the one thing that you have been able to do successfully the whole ballgame. So the question does go back to Kyle Shanahan. So let, let's take the, the end of the game out of it. Let's talk about the last two minutes of the first half, which is where it was really criminal what Shanahan did. Now, we can talk about the bad offensive pass interference call, right? If you want to look at it by letter of the law, that is the correct call. But it is that one was not even as egregious as the one that cost the Saints in overtime against the Vikings in the playoffs. The one that Kyle Rudolph did where he completely pushed off and they didn't call it, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, it, it's just ridiculous. So, you've got a stop with a minute 45 left, a minute 50, something like that, and Kansas City has to punt the ball back to you, and Shanahan doesn't call a timeout. And you've got plenty of them. He doesn't call a timeout. He just lets the clock run. They get the ball back. They run two plays, in, in actual running plays, to run down the clock, and then they decide to take a shot deep. And it's only one shot deep. Now, I understand where he's coming from playing devil's advocate, right? Because you don't want to go three and out very quickly and give the Chiefs the ball back. But you've only got 10 points on the board. And, yes, you've held Kansas City to only 10 points. You don't want to go down at the half. But you also got to play to win the game. (coughs) Excuse me. So you you don't want to go down, but you do want to win. And if you're going to win a game like this, you know that you're going to have to score points. And it was just ridiculous to not do anything until there's 20 seconds left in the half, and then you're going to take a shot. You don't have to take a shot every play. Just go out and try and do something other than run into the middle of the line. That just didn't make any sense to me. So... That is something you have to wonder, is Shanahan going to have this hang over his head the next time he's in a big spot? Like, he hasn't been in a a tight, tight playoff atmosphere type of game because they were up big on the Packers. They were up big on the 49ers. He didn't have to worry about it. Like, the play calling in those spots didn't really matter, uh, especially because they were able to run over them. 
right? In this game, they were able to run over the Chiefs, and they didn't. They didn't score any points in the fourth quarter, uh, partly because they went away from it. And so, uh, the the last touchdown that Williams ran in for the Chiefs to make it 31-20 to instead of 24-20. to Just, one, great blocking by the Chiefs on the edge, but just inexcusable. Like, to be in that spot where, okay, we know we got to get three stops, and we've got timeouts, and we can get the ball back. And they do a simple handoff off tackle, and he takes it to the house for 50, 60 yards, whatever it is. Just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, let's talk about the let's talk about the halftime show before we get to the ads. Uh, how incredible was that, right? J Lo, Shakira, absolutely fantastic. Uh, had you bet on She Wolf as the opening song for Shakira, that would have paid out twelve to one. Had you bet Jenny from the Block as J Lo's opening song. That would have paid out 20 to 1. So both were big underdogs. But I felt like they were the bigger songs, right? Like it, maybe they shouldn't have been such uh, such big underdogs in those spots. I, I don't know how they ended up plus money. But uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know of many people that were super upset about this. Obviously, you get on Twitter, you get on Facebook, any kind of social media, you're going to find detractors for anything. I don't think people were too offended by this. Uh, but those that were you're never going to make everybody happy, right? It's just ridiculous. So, uh, I had a good time with it. It was rather enjoyable for me. My wife loves salsa, loves Latin dance, all that kind of stuff, and it was awesome. We had a good time. Our son was up dancing around. Everybody that was over at the house had a good time with it. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. thought it was great. Fit the mood well. Fit Miami well. Uh, I would have him back again. I mean, that, that was... You, you ain't going to get much hotter than those two. And it was incredibly entertaining. I will say that. Now let's talk about the Super Bowl ads. The first, or the best rated. And we'll just talk about the first, uh, let's go with 10. We'll do 10. The best rated per the ad meter on USA Today. The Jeep commercial for Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Average rating was a 7.01. Uh, it aired in the third quarter. If you're watching the game, you saw it. It was actually fantastic. Loved it. Uh, number two was the Hyundai Smart Park. Uh, that was great. Jim from the office, of course, was in it. Uh, you got Captain America in it. Uh, you got the girl from Saturday Night Live in it. That one was a lot of fun. Um, you ended up having uh, Big Poppy, you know, from the Red Sox. He showed up in it. That was great. Number three is the Google ad, and they called that one uh, Loretta. Now, yeah, great commercial. Get you all in the feels. I don't want to watch that while I'm trying to have a good time and watch a football game. Now, I, I did remember the commercial, so obviously that's a big deal, right? But that is not not what I would have done in that situation, but it did make you, uh, did make you feel a little bit. If anybody wanted to cry in the Super Bowl, uh, yeah, that's that's what Google was trying to do. They were trying to get you in your feels, and they succeeded. Uh, number four was the Doritos Cool Ranch commercial with uh, Lil Nas X and Sam Elliott, and that was a lot of fun, right, because they're doing Old Town Road, all that kind of stuff. That was great. Uh, the Rocket Mortgage Comfortable commercial was number five. That's the one with Jason Momoa where he takes off all of his muscles. That was awesome. Now, I did enjoy that one. Um and, of course, all the memes that have come out afterwards. Like, they, they've got Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and they're saying, that's Michigan with uh, unranked teams. And then Momoa, when he takes all the muscles off and he can just be himself, uh, that's Michigan against, like, top ten teams. Yeah, really funny. Really funny. Uh, number six, the next 100, that's the NFL commercial with the kid that's running through uh, all the different states, all the different stadiums, whatever, uh, through the streets. Amazon before Alexa. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't even remember that one. Like, I remember a little bit about it. Like, they were showing all the different, you know, stuff from way back, old-timey, whatever. Uh, the Kia Tough Never Quits was number eight. Eh. Uh, Microsoft Be The One 
was number nine. Okay. And then Cheeto's number 10 was Can't Touch This, the MC Hammer coming back with the Can't Touch This. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. Pretty good. I loved MC Hammer as a kid. Loved MC Hammer. It was fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, all in all, a good evening, a good night, a good game. The stats were weird because, obviously, Kansas City didn't really get their offense going until six and a half minutes left in the game. The most important play of the game was the third down and 15 play with six and a half minutes left that they hit for 40-some-odd yards. Uh, we talked in the in the preview about whether or not the San Francisco defensive backs were going to be able to hang with these wide receivers. And they were for the most part, but when it came down to crunch time, they could not hang with them, and it was not even close. The matchup was ridiculous. So... Uh, cheers to the Chiefs. They had a, a fantastic time, a good night, and uh, and yeah, I, I was excited about it. I think it was good. Uh, I'm looking forward to the XFL starting up this weekend. It's going to be fun. Chris will be back in town. Next week, we're going to be doing the show with him. Um, but for now, short podcast, short recap. I'm sure he and I will discuss a few things here and there. Uh, but until then, we will talk to you later. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.